Almost two decades ago, in this very Choitram school, we were taken on a class trip to the school's sewage treatment plant. Generally, a wastewater treatment facility is not a most pleasant place to visit. But I, like most kids in the class, was more than happy as long as we got to get out of the class. But that visit stuck in my subconscious. I moved on with my life. I graduated from IIT Bombay with a B.Tech in civil engineering. Uh, I worked with the top, uh, some top civil engineering and real estate firms before joining a top real estate startup where I got the opportunity to hire train lead a team of 700 people at the tender age of 24. And I was also part of the CEO's office at this 3,000 member strong organization. This gave me the confidence that even I can start an organization myself. But my inclination towards solving the most pressing and social problems of today and my engineering background led me to evaluate startups in the air, water, and energy space. So I moved back to my hometown in Dal and started clean water. The subconscious recollection of visiting that sewage treatment plant or STPs as they're called somehow came back to me and led me to start my own startup to give uh, to help organizations set up similar sewage treatment plants. We set up over 25 such STPs before realizing that out of these 25, only five clients are actually running their STPs and that a consulting or contracting based services based business model is not really very scalable. But at the same time, if we follow a product based business model, it is far more scalable. What we also realized that the sector of restoring water bodies is completely empty with no competition and no major big players in it. So we made a product for restoring water bodies called floating islands. Floating islands, floating islands are a natural tool that leverage the power of nature and wetlands to provide cleansing action to water bodies. Floating wetlands help settle the sediments and uptake nitrogen, phosphorus and heavy metals for cleaner water. They provide habitat to all life forms, ensuring restoration of ecology and biodiversity as well. These wetlands or islands help in beautification of the surroundings as well and provide an aesthetic facelift to the surroundings. Till date, we have made more than 16 unique types of islands, installed them on over 12 water bodies, including stagnant water bodies like lakes and ponds and flowing water bodies like rivers and drains, and spread across five states. We have made islands of different material, wood, metal, aluminium, FRP, different sizes, one meter by one meter, two, two by two, one by two, etc. Different shapes, square, rectangular, circular, and custom shaped islands. Islands that can take up to 1000 kilograms of weight and still float. And islands that can bear the brunt of flowing water in the peak monsoon uh, currents. We restored a pond in Indor called Nalanda Sarovar, for which we were humbled to receive the award of Water Hero from the central government, the Ministry of Jal Shakti. And uh, we did some, uh, we set up a biofilter and a waterfall at the lake as well, and did some beautification works as well. And all of this was going pretty good. But then lockdown was enforced, which brought our organization to its knees. You see, Restoration of water bodies was anyways in the last priority list of the government. And post-COVID, the government had absolutely no funds to spare for restoration of water bodies. Even our STP or sewage treatment plant business was adversely affected because of environmental re relaxations extended to under construction projects. I tried for a couple of months, but eventually I had to let go of my staff and move back to taking up a job to make finances meet. But I didn't let go of this dream of restoring water bodies. About a year ago, uh, me and my wife thought that we should take up restoration of Piplihana Lake in Indore as part of a marriage. So we set up an online fundraiser and asked our family friends to donate to this cause rather than giving us gifts and cash. With the funds received, we were able to set up five floating wetlands at the lake 
which performed tremendously well. This is actually me standing on top of one of her islands. Thank you. With two years since the start of COVID, uh, things began to change and come back to normalcy. We received a grant from the central government, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, under Amrit 2.0 mission, by which we set up eight more wetlands and four floating aerators to ensure uh, restoration of the lake. These aerators provide oxygen in the water to improve water quality and aid aquatic life. We are also dosing microbacteria at the lake for complete pollutant removal. The biodiversity at the lake also seems to be thriving. But the entire COVID chapter uh, taught me a lesson that the government does not have enough funds to restore the millions of water bodies in the coming 10 to 15 years. And that a global geopolitical event might again come in the future which leaves the government with no funds to spare for water bodies. And we as a business need to be ready for such an event in the future. But we thought to ourselves, is restoration of water bodies really possible without taking funds from the government, right? Because individuals and businesses don't contribute to water bodies, right? It's the government's responsibility. But after much brainstorming, we have come up with a model uh, through which we can restore water bodies without taking any funds from the government by a PPP model or a public-private partnership model. You might have seen examples of a PPP model around you with highways and toll booths. So when government wants to build highways and does not have the money, a private contractor comes in, puts in money from his own pocket, builds the highways and then recover and maintains it in the coming years and then recovers his investment over a certain period of years. What if we could do something similar for water bodies? So. This is now what we're proposing to the government that we'll come in and solve all of the problems related to water bodies while keeping an environment first approach and satisfying all stakeholders like government, fishermen, citizens, lakeside communities, etc. And without taking funds from the government. All we need to do is take these water bodies on lease from the government, put in investment, restore it, and then the revenue is going to flow in from consumers and businesses. So this traditional B2G segment is now converted into a B2C or B2B segment and therefore it becomes much more investable from an investor's point of view as well. How we're going about restoring the lake is through floating wetlands, dosing bacterial solutions and setting up aerators and then generating revenue from multiple streams from the lake such as boating, fishing, tourism, uh, setting up advertisements around the wetlands, setting up a nursery or a hydroponics unit at the lake in order to recover our investment. This will ensure that the water bodies, which are supposed to be an asset for everyone and which have turned into a liability recently, will turn back into an asset for everyone. Because right now, the government has to spend a budget to restore the water bodies. But what if we can restore the water body without taking any funds from the government and on the contrary, sharing some revenue with them? This will ensure this asset turns into a liability. We will also aerate the lake by which we will reduce methane emissions coming out of the lake or the water body generate carbon credits, fight climate change, and reduce global greenhouse emissions. We'll keep the water body clean, thereby uh, reducing, uh, thereby ensuring that the groundwater also don't get, doesn't get polluted. We'll create livelihood and jobs that previously did not exist. Uh, we ensure restoration of ecology and biodiversity as well, and do beautification works at the water body as well. And if we keep the water body clean, obviously the number of waterborne diseases and deaths also go down. We are actually catering to 10 out of 17 sustainable development goals as defined by the United Nations. The reason I'm here today uh, to share my experience with, uh, experiences with you all is to create a young and new batch of social impact and climate entrepreneurs. You see, entrepreneurship is a tough journey. Uh, with daily ups and downs. It tests you physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, you need grit, determination, hard work, talent, the right team, the right timing, the correct business model, the right market conditions, and everything else needs to be right to make it successful. The world needs uh, entrepreneurs like you to ste step up, take control, and drive change. Uh, we're operating under the ticking time bomb of climate change. 
and we've already seen uh, events on a global level. Just for example, this year, there was a drought in China and a massive flood in Pakistan at the same time. Water security is of utmost importance for us and our nation. The world is actually waiting for you. So most share to you and Godspeed. Thank you so much.